in action will be hosting a Zoom call tomorrow at 8 p.m. type Prayers for All Souls Day. It's prayers for Emmanuel and all of the boys and family members that have passed. Please sign up for that Zoom meeting via the website. November is the month of the day, and the church encourages us to offer masses for our departed loved ones and for our souls in purgatory. We will have all of those available for you to submit those names you wish us to pray for. We will also have the Book of the Dead, which is in the back of the church, which will be placed on the altar and will hold the names for all those who, are, who, we, will, who, we, who we will be praying for. Uh, there will be a presentation on justice, racism, prejudice, and bias, presented by Sister Mary Nancy and Matthew Kressler on Friday, November 6th, and Saturday, November 7th, from the Iraqi Oratory. This program will be presented online via Zoom. For details, go to the Iraqi Oratory website under the tab Center for Spirituality and click on events to register. And more, and more information will be on the website regarding the event. Remember that the deadline is time for Sunday Masses is on Friday it's about 5 p.m. This will ensure that we can uh, we all be safe and we can contract tracing if necessary. It is mandatory you to sign up for Mass. If you do not have access to a computer or the internet, you can call the church office Monday through Friday before 12 noon and leave a message or talk to one of the secretaries and they will register you for that particular Mass. Starting this week, there will be morning Mass at 8.30 a.m. every day except Tuesdays. Please plan to sign in have your temperatures checked for daily matters. Please be aware that the Capital Campaign team is still in the process of reaching out to everyone. May God bless and enjoy the past. Let us begin our celebration.
of Reza Kamonia Mukanya, as requested by Charlotte Makangu, for the repose of the soul of Justina Chindo Okwechuku, given by Dr. Chika Duru and Aijino Okwechuku. Uh, Emmanuel passed away, and it's like Emmanuel said, Ramo, come with me. So Emmanuel's grandmother, that is Aijino's grandmother, died last week. We continue to pray for that family, and the young souls rest in peace. Anniversary blessings for Cleveland and Susan and Susanna Tilly, which was October 7, uh, October 6, requested by Stephen Tilly. So Cleveland and uh, Susanna, happy anniversary. Thank you for the wonderful contribution of our church. We pray for the repose of the soul of Florence. Nganso, requested by the Rocho family, for the repose of the soul of souls of Wanda and Walter Tmiak, requested by Nani Frey. Birthday blessings for Keira Grace Katin, requested by the Katin family, for blessings and healings for Sophia Navaf Sofe, requested by Stan Fry. For blessings and healing for Father David Kessinger, requested by Stan Fry. And we pray for birthday blessings for Anthony Nico Dunebre, requested by the Dunebre and Gittin's family. Thank you, Nick, for always being the mother. Thank you, the God bless you for your birthday, and the God bless all the days who have been celebrating within this month. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Feast of All the Saints, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries worthily. Let us call to mind our sins.
I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of red distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them to say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they are in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will be inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord God is good. Oh, and all the time, God is good. today we celebrate the feast of all saints. All the saints. Those who have come before us, who lived righteous lives. And uh, th there is a famous phrase that every saint has the past. And every sinner has a future. Because every, all the saints we celebrate were human beings like you and I. So they, they also made their mistakes. They had their past history. But they repented and they became powerful people. That's why they are in heaven today. And every sinner, sinners as you and I, we have a future. So, so what is our duty now? To keep on repenting so that tomorrow we too become saints. That, that's why there is this writer they call uh, Fl Fl Florence Bacat. He says, the world is a saint making machine. Have you ever seen a machine? Mm -hmm. It purifies. You put garbage into the machine, and what comes out? Pure papers, clothing, metal, and whatever. So the world, the universe, is a saint making machine. So in your duty and my duty now is to keep on living good lives to find ourselves so that tomorrow we come out as sin. Every sin has a past and every sinner has a future. Now, before we proceed with uh, the, the, the theology of the Feast of All Sins, I want us to think about yesterday, you know, I, I was somewhere, I saw little kids moving up and down and what, what, what were they doing? What, what, what were they thinking about? How do they call it? How do we call the day of yesterday? Halloween. Did some of us send it go out for the Halloween? <laughs> and, and what I want us to do sometimes, or all the time, is to see how we can fit everything we do within the Christian or the Catholic perspective. Now, Halloween. Is it a Christian feast? <laughs> Everybody said no. Now, <laughs> Halloween, if you were to research on Halloween, it has a Christian origin. So there is some Christian, a lot of Christianity in Halloween. It shows that, like most things, sometimes we, we change the focus. The word Halloween is from, the, from two ancient English words, Hallo and Eerie. Now, can we remember the meaning of hallo? When we say hallo, what are we referring to? Our Father, who are in heaven? Hallo. Can we just guess the meaning of hallo? Holy, holy, holy be your name. So can we see the Christian root in Halloween? Holy evening. 
and who are the saints? They were people who were holy. So, so Halloween in the ancient Catholic tradition was the eve of the feast of all saints. You see why Halloween has a Christian origin? So what were people doing on that day? They were thinking about those holy people who have died. And then the, the aspect of giving gifts and, and donation is rooted in the, the tradition of praying or offering masses for those who have died. That's why you see in November, the church says it's the month for the dead. And in the book of Maccabees, in the second book of Maccabees, we are told that Judas instructed people to collect arms so that sacrifices be offered for those soldiers who were killed in, for, because of their, their, their struggle for God. So, so that's how the whole Halloween started. People were thinking about the dead. It just happened that at some point it was distorted and then evil and good spirit came together. That's why we see all these wild things coming into being. So, so when we celebrate Halloween, we are thinking about the eve of the feast of all saints. And we remember those who have died and remember that as we exchange gifts, we pray for the dead by offering whatever we can offer. So why do we celebrate the feast of all saints? We are celebrating the feast of all saints because as St. John tells us in the first reading of today, the book of Revelation, I saw a good number of people who were dressed in what color? White. And white is the symbol of purity. So, of course, at some point he said the people were numbered 144,000. You know, some churches would deceive us and they say there are only 144,000 people there. No. 144 simply meant that they were all from the 12 tribes of Israel. And all of us were from the new people of Israel. So John was just using a figurative way of telling us that everybody was represented in heaven. And 12, of course, for the Jews, symbolizes perfection. Meanwhile, heaven symbolizes a good multitude, uncountable number. That's why the reading continues. John says, I saw a huge number, impossible to count from every corner, every part of the earth, which means, my brothers and sisters, heaven is for all. Heaven can never be free. The only challenge between, for you and I is, how do I get to heaven? That's why the Beatitude is, is, is just wonderful. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who are not attached to material things, things of the earth. Those who do not stop things, in their closet and in their bank accounts just to be watching and admiring. But then, those who are poor in spirit means those who can have as much as possible, but their hearts are not tied to them. Their hearts are open to charity. Blessed are those who mourn, which, which means those who sympathize with others, not those who celebrate the downfall of others. Well, blessed are the pure in heart, those with clean hearts. Not those with clean dresses, as important as it is to have clean dresses on. The most important is to be clean in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who make peace, not those who hang on grudges, hang on conflict, and make them. Blessed are you who are persecuted. You know, some people everywhere they just talk against them anyhow, they do for nothing. You are blessed when people criticize you for nothing. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their faith. You do everything. You come to church. You support the church. Yet others stay behind, provoking you as if you are doing something abstract. No! We are all looking for salvation. And those of us who move around making peace, those of us with clean hearts, those of us who do things the right way, even if we undergo persecution, ours is the kingdom of so the whole world is the saint making machine. We are supposed to struggle, my brothers and sisters, to become saints. And why do we even remember the dead? 
Some people will tell us, oh, when they are there, they are gone. No! The church tells us that we have three grades of, three levels of the church. The church on earth, him and I live in. The church in poverty, we call it the suffering church. Those who are still get what are going to glorification to get to heaven. And the triumphant church, those who are already in heaven. So three grades of the church. The church on earth, the church in poverty, and the church in heaven. All of us form one church. That's why you know, St. Paul tells us, Romans chapter 14 verse 9, whether we are alive or whether we are dead, we belong to the Lord. And then he tells us again, Romans 13, 6, remember your leaders, remember those who preached the gospel to you, remember those who set good examples for you and who have now gone to eternity and imitate their faith. So when we talk about all the saints today, we talk about Saint John, Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Andrew, Matthias, Agatha, Agnes, Cecilia, all the saints, and even those other brothers and sisters of ours who have died and who are still in heaven, not yet proclaimed saints by the Lord, when we think about them, what do we do? We imitate their faith. That's why we, we call the saints time and again. And we ask them to intercede for us. And so my brothers and sisters, during this holy mass, let us think of all the righteous people who have died in our families and in our community. And let us pray for them so that they will have their sins forgiven and they too will live in heaven as saints. Because our God is a merciful God. And above all, we pray for all the saints that they should continue to intercede for us. And then we pray for ourselves too. That living in the world full of challenges, full of distractions, full of temptations, we too will be people of peace, people of love, people of charity, and people of faith. So that when our own days are ended, we too will become saints. And we shall experience God's kingdom fully in heaven, where Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God. That God in His love and mercy may listen to the prayers we all find today and we all live on by us. As we can be called children of God, we are all alive and called to God as our Father and express our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, the communion of saints, that we may grow in holiness as we grow in faithfulness to the Beatitudes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For leaders of nations, that they may choose to be Makers, recognizing the image of God even in their enemies, and encouraging the people they lead to do the same. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
For those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 